this is Amin Patel. This video is about bridge rectifier. In the previous video, we had seen, I had discussed about the rectifier. It's an electronic circuit which converts the alternating signal into the direct signal. We had also seen the half wave rectifier, then the full wave rectifier with the center tip transformer. And this video is basically concentrating on the bridge rectifier. So let us see the circuit diagram for the bridge rectifier. So the circuit of the bridge rectifier consists of a simple transformer and 4 p-n junction diode and a resistor. You can see in the figure the input signal which is applied to the circuit is at the primary of the transformer and that is the sinusoidal signal. And the output which we are getting is across the load. And the 4 p-n junction diodes are connected in form of bridge. It is forming a bridge and the load is as shown in the figure and voltage across the load is the pulsating DC that is the output of the rectifier. Now we will do the analysis for the bridge rectifier for the positive half cycle of the input signal and the negative half cycle of the input signal. So let us see the working of bridge rectifier for the positive half cycle. You can see in the circuit diagram the input signal to the primary of the transformer is a positive half cycle and due to that the polarity at the secondary of the transformer is such that that will turn on diode D1 and D2 in the forward bias. So D1 and D2 is on and the diode D3 and D4 are in the reverse bias due to, due to the polarity on the secondary and this D3 and D4 are off. That's why the current is flowing through the secondary of the transformer through the diode D1, through the resistor and the D2 and onto the second uh, other terminal of the secondary winding. So this is how the current uh, flowing and the path of the flow of current is also shown in the figure and the output is taken across the load that is the resistor and that you will find the positive half cycle. Now we will see the working of bridge rectifier for the negative half cycle. You can see in the figure the input on the primary of the transformer is shown with the negative half cycle and due to that the polarity on the secondary of the transformer is such that diode D3 and D4 will be in the forward bias. That means it will get turned on and D1 and D2 is in the reverse bias. That's why D1 and D2 are off. So the current is following the path from the secondary of the transformer terminal then to D4 then the resistor and then through D3 and the upper terminal of the secondary of the transformer. The path of the current or path of the flow of current is shown in the figure and the voltage is taken across the load and the voltage is also shown in the figure. Now we will analyze the waveform for the bridge rectifier. The first waveform is for the input signal and that is the signal which is appearing on the secondary of the transformer and the second signal is the output current signal and the third signal is the output voltage signal. You can see during the positive half cycle the diode D1 and D2 both are on and D3, D4 are off. That's why the current is flowing through the D1, D2 and the current is flowing through the resistor and voltage is taken across the resistor and the path for or equivalent circuit for positive half cycle of the input signal is shown in the figure and during the negative half cycle D3 and D4 diode are on and D1 and D2 are off and we are getting the output voltage and the current. So here we are getting output voltage and current for the full, for the both the half cycle, for positive as well as negative half cycle. That's why this is called the full wave rectifier. Now we will do the calculation for the DC or the average value of the voltage. For that we will analyze the output voltage signal. You can see the signal which is from 0 to pi is the sinusoidal signal. So output voltage is given by Vm sin omega t and the same signal is being repeated. The signal which is lying from 0 to pi is being repeated. So the portion which is from 0 to pi is used to find out the average value because this portion is 
being repeated in the output voltage waveform. That's why the VDC is equal to 1 divided by pi integration from 0 to pi V out d omega t. Now put the value of V out that is Vm sin omega t we get the next equation. Now Vm is a constant integrate the sin omega t we are getting next equation. Put the value of the limits and solving it we are getting that Vdc is equal to 2 Vm by pi. Now we will find out the DC or average value of the current and we will follow the same steps. We will analyze the output current signal. Again it is a sinusoidal signal. So the signal is represented by IM sin omega t and the portion which is lying from 0 to pi is being repeated uh, as shown in the output current waveform. And this repetitive portion is being used to find out the average value. That's why IDC is equal to 1 divided by pi integration from 0 to pi i d omega t. Now put the value of i that is i m sin omega t we get next equation. Now i m is constant integrate the sin omega t we are getting next equation. Put the value of the limit and solving it we are getting i d c is equal to 2 i m by pi. Next we will find out the RMS or AC current that is IRMS. Again the same output current waveform is shown that I is equal to IM sin omega t and put the root mean square equation. IRMS is equal to square root of 1 divided by pi integration from 0 to pi I square d omega t. Put the value of I that is IM sin omega t. Now I m square is a constant so take it out from the integration and for sin square omega t we are putting the equation 1 minus cos 2 omega t by 2. Now by integrating uh, this equation for 1 we are having omega t and for cos 2 omega t we are having sin 2 omega t divided by 2. We get next equation by putting the value of the limits we are getting the next equation. In this the second part is 0 because 0 is in the multiplication. So we just have pi and just by solving it we are getting IRMS is equal to IM by root 2. Now we will find out the RMS or AC voltage that is VRMS. Again the output voltage is shown. Now just by using the Ohm's law, VRMS is equal to IRMS into RL. IRMS we had already calculated in the last uh, slide. So just put its value that is IM by root 2. In place of IM we can write VM divided by RS plus RF plus RL. Where RS is the secondary coil resistance and RF is the forward resistance of the diode. These two resistance are very small and its value is in few ohm. So we can neglect RS plus RF in comparison with the RL which is very less than the RL. RL is in the kilo ohm and more than that. So we are getting next equation. Just by solving it we get VRMS is equal to Vm by root 2. So here uh, we have seen the analysis parameter that is AC or the RMS and DC that is the average value of the current and voltage. And with this I am ending this session over here. Thank you.